Hello everyone. There's a bit of difficulty getting started there. How are you keeping? That's a funny phrase, isn't it? What is it that we're keeping? Keeping. When I, when I looked that on the dictionary, I got some of these meanings. Custody. Observance. Trust. Let's look. Let's take a wee look at some of those in the light of our current circumstances. How are you keeping custody? In this respect, it refers to keeping safe, doesn't it? Rather than detention, being in custody or being a guardian of something. So what are we guarding right now? I suppose we're guarding each other in the phone calls we make, in the FaceTime with family, in our thoughts and care for others. Even if we're vulnerable ourselves, we can pray for each other. Never underestimate the power of prayer. We're also the guardian of our mental health at the moment too, and it's easy to see how this can be affected. We're not used to being told that we can or cannot go out or come in or what we can do. Yes, we, we abide by the law, but we've always had so much freedom of will and freedom of choice. In a way, we are in custody, even as is well meant and for the good of all. One of the things that I do, which, which I find helps greatly my mental health, is before I pray at night, I make a plan for the next day. Now, I can then offer that plan to God in my prayers. Now, you, you might ask me, well, what do you plan? You can't plan to go out. You can't plan to do something, to meet a friend for coffee. But on the contrary, you can, of course, plan to meet a friend for coffee. Uh, I have a good friend. We meet mostly every other Monday uh, in normal circumstances for, for a cup of coffee at half nine on a Monday. And uh, so we've just kept up that tradition and at half past nine I get my coffee and uh, I, I get my phone and FaceTime and she does the same where she lives and we have our usual Monday morning uh, conversation. Sometimes I have to have my breakfast with me and sometimes she's in her dressing gown. <laughs> so you can make these plans. You can make a plan. And even if you don't have FaceTime, well, certainly you can uh, lift the phone and have a coffee in your other hand and have a coffee and a chat with a friend. Remember the old uh, British telecom ad, it's good to talk, it's good to talk. Now your plan can be very simple, put a wash on, make soup, do a crossword, just ordinary things I know. But having a plan, you have something to work to, something to get up to in the morning, something to get up for, and maybe something to look forward to even. Sometimes things might not go as planned. I've had a lemon drizzle cake on my plan for about three weeks now, but in fact it has now gone as far as getting onto the shopping list uh, for this week for flour. Now the next word, observance, another meaning for keeping. Uh, when you ask someone that question, how are you keeping? Very often it's just politeness, isn't it? Giving someone an opportunity to talk or express their feelings. But I think it calls for two types of observance. A looking inwards, again, a good thing to do for our mental health. How am I feeling? Uh, do I need to try and change how I'm feeling? And how can I do that? That's where looking outward comes in. And remember, back to our Corona code, stop, look and listen. Observance of what makes us feel better and determining to do more of that. Yet do we take comfort in scripture and the knowledge of God's presence with us? Do we take comfort in prayer in reading and caring for others and being out of doors and watching a film and talking to a friend? Being aware of those things which make us feel better and determined to do those things. Lastly, trust. Trust as feeling. How are we keeping? How are we feeling? This is a bit harder to understand why the dictionary would have trust as a synonym uh, of keeping. 
I expect it suggests keeping a trust. What do you think about when you hear the word trust? Um, we've spoken often over the last few weeks of God's faithfulness, of uh, how we can trust in that and how we can trust in his promises. But this all very much depends on our belief, doesn't it? In today's world, there are a lot of discouraged and fearful people and many are turning and returning to God for answers. I have a friend who longs to have faith, but Pat can't because there's no proof. Where's your proof, she says, no scientific evidence. I've read Hebrews 11 to her and I faith has been sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. You see, it all starts there. God's promises are meaningless unless we have faith in them. Now, everyone has faith in something and that faith is usually grounded in experience. Faith in a certain type of car or faith in the diet. Uh, we have faith in things and our faith is only as good as the product, isn't that right? In which we, we place our faith. So where do we place our faith? Scripture tells us that we are to personally put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And in Acts we read, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Saved? Saved from what? Saved from our doubts? Saved from ourselves? Saved from our selfishness, our thoughtlessness? saved from our sinfulness. Going back to Hebrews 11, I love those two words, being sure, being sure. How can you be sure? My friend asks. Once you take that leap of faith and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, once you ask him into your life and wait, then your eyes will be opened to the truth. His word will come alive. You will see the promises he has made and how he keeps them. What about your scepticism? Well, you know, even the most fervent Christian can have doubts. But when we trust, we take those doubts to God and he can build on them. Our doubts can be a learning curve which strengthens our faith. That's just a few thoughts that have tumbled from my opening words to you. How are you keeping? So how are you keeping? Are you keeping in and staying safe? Are you guarding yourself in body, mind and spirit? Remember, bring it all to God in prayer. Are you keeping the faith and trusting in God that he is the blessed controller of all things? I hope you're all keeping well. And I want to leave you with these words from Jeremiah 29. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Let us pray. Three months, Lord, three months of isolation, of keeping our distance, not just from colleagues or friends, but from those closest to us, even our nearest and dearest. Separate houses, separate everything. Just ourselves, hour upon hour, day upon day. Can we cope? Father, will it drive us insane? We honestly wonder sometimes. Yet we know, Lord, that's nonsense, for it's a small price to pay to protect those we love. It seems hard, but it's not really, not compared to what so many are going through at this time. Remind us of that, Lord, should we start to feel sorry for ourselves and teach us to do our bit gladly, willingly and conscientiously. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. And did you hear Susie barking there? Yes, the man next door was just taking out her, her enemy for, for their nightly walk. And so that's what I'll say to you now. Night, night. Sleep tight and don't let the bugs bite.